The Himaway Cruiser is not a unique e-bike, but that's not a bad thing. Fat tire, cruiser style electric bikes are popular and are available from a lot of companies. I've personally ridden and reviewed quite a few different e-bikes in this style, however this bike does what it sets out to do better than most of the other fat tire e-bikes I've tested. The Cruiser is a solid, reliable, fun, and versatile product at a reasonable price. This is a 26 inch bike with a frame similar to a number of other bikes I've tested previously. It's a good size accommodating my 6 foot 1 inch frame while still being small enough for shorter riders to use. The battery mounted on the down tube of the frame is not as aesthetically pleasing as a battery built into the frame can be, but it's easy to remove and install and it's a good size at 17.5 amp hours. The front suspension fork is a coil fork with what appears to be 90 millimeters of travel. It has a lockout as well. Suspension forks like this can sometimes feel like an unnecessary addition, especially for street and commuting focused e-bikes, often adding unnecessary weight without offering enough benefits for a bike that rides only on road. However, after spending quite a bit of time riding off road with this bike, I really like the choice to go with suspension in addition to the fat tires. The four inch wide, four inch thick fat tires offer a cushy ride and great grip across just about every type of terrain. The suspension and tire combo give the bike a floaty feel that makes it easy to ride for long periods of time. The drivetrain is made up of the typical Shimano Altus components that you see on bikes of this price and style. This group set has been consistently reliable across all the bikes I've used it on. It has a 7 speed cassette that has enough range to cover all of the different riding modes and scenarios you might need to use the bike in. The lever and button style shifter is also very common on this style of e-bike and again it has always performed well for me and is intuitive to use. This is a heavy bike at over 70 pounds so keep that in mind if you'll be loading this in and out of a car or truck or taking it on and off of a bike rack. I'll talk more about how the weight affects the ride feel a little later. Out of the box with default settings, this is a 20 mile an hour e-bike with the top speed limited. But you can increase the speed limit to 28 miles an hour by going into the P settings and it will ask you for a code which is 0510. There are more detailed instructions on how to do this on Himaway's website and also in the owner's manual. However, for this review, I did the entirety of my riding with the default settings as it would be out of the box, with my top speed limited to 20 miles an hour. So keep this in mind when I talk performance and when you watch this ride footage. The Cruiser offers both pedal assistance and a twist throttle. If you increase the top speed limit, it will increase both the top speed of the pedal assistance and the top speed of the throttle, which is a nice bonus since Class 3 e-bikes typically only have throttle acceleration up to 20 miles an hour. With a 48 volt battery and a 750 watt rear hub motor, the bike gets up to speed quickly but not over aggressively. There are six different riding modes available, assist levels one to five, plus a no assistance mode zero. Okay, so in the zero mode, no throttle available, and it's full manual pedaling. So I need to downshift, full manual. It's a bit like trying to walk through mud. Um, not great. This is what's going to happen if you don't have any battery. So you can't really bank on being able to get home with zero battery left in any sort of reasonable amount of time. In fact, with other fat tire bikes like this, I, if, I, if the battery dies, I don't even ride at home. I just end up walking at home most of the time. Then mode one is obviously quite a step up from mode zero. You should at the very least set yourself up that if you're like low on battery, like to get home using mode one. Mode two is another pretty big step up from mode one. And you're already seeing that it's getting up towards 16 miles an hour, which would be 14 because this, uh, the display reads a couple miles an hour faster than actual GPS speed. Then three. Again, a step up. Uh, looks like about four mile an hour step up. So you're already at 20, well, 18 miles an hour. Then you got mode four and 
mode four really pushes it to the top of speed. So you honestly don't even need mode five at all. And then mode five. Yeah, you really don't even need mode five. The throttle gives you an option to take a break from pedaling. I also use the throttle to assist my takeoffs from zero and to help navigate tight turns since the throttle has more fine control over the motor than the pedal assistance which is either fully on or fully off. Twist throttles are not my favorite and I do have a preference for thumb throttles on e-bikes. Thumb throttles are just a bit easier to use in my opinion and don't get in the way of your hand and the grip. It can also be a little awkward to turn the throttle if you're standing up on the bike. However, I know that some people do find a twist throttle more intuitive, so it's definitely just a preference thing and not a make or break issue for me. The bike is plenty powerful for steep hills, never really dipping below 15 miles an hour even when climbing the steepest hills in my area. Obviously, your uphill speed is affected by how hard you pedal, but even with my lazy pedaling, I was really happy with the performance. The brakes are a bit of a weak point since they're only mechanical rather than hydraulic. I sound like a broken record about this, but there really isn't any reason to not include hydraulic brakes on a PEV at this price. Hydraulic brakes offer much better stopping power and require less day-to-day -day maintenance. Mechanical brakes often require frequent tweaking and adjustment as the pads wear down. A heavy bike like this going 20 plus miles an hour could really use a good set of brakes and these do fall a little short in my opinion. At the end of the day though, they are brakes and they do bring the bike to a stop. Upgrading the brakes yourself is a reasonable choice as well. Related to this, I do want to note that the bike actually has internal cable routing, a nice feature that keeps all the brake and motor lines out of the way by running them through the frame of the bike. There are a ton of bike videos online to show you how to upgrade your brakes and route the lines properly if you need assistance. In my testing, I was regularly able to get over 20 miles of range per battery riding in the max speed mode 5. This is a typical range for bikes like this. Do keep in mind though that this is the minimum range, meaning that if you decide to ride in a lower speed mode, you can get better range. Like I said when I was covering all the speed modes, you can really just keep the bike in speed mode 4 if you want to ride at the default top speed of 20 miles an hour, while also conserving a bit of battery. The lower speed modes 1-3 to 3, will likely be plenty for a casual ride and should greatly extend your battery's range. Note that the range will be a bit worse if you choose to increase the top speed limiter to 28 miles an hour and ride in the highest speed mode. As I mentioned previously, this is a very heavy bike. Most of the time when you are riding, you won't notice the weight of the bike because all your pedal strokes are obviously being assisted by the motor, but you're reminded of how heavy this bike is when going off a curb or doing rougher off-roading. The weight can be a bonus for staying planted on the ground and for getting good traction, but it makes the bike feel a little less nimble in certain situations. If you do any more mountain bike style riding with this, you will notice how loud and jangly the chain and derailleur are due to a lack of clutch to keep the chain tensioned. This isn't a surprise given that this is an entry level drivetrain that almost all e-bikes at this price have, but you might want to consider upgrading to a mountain bike derailleur with a clutch if keeping the bike quiet while riding off road is a priority for you. The general feel of the bike while riding is really good though. It feels cushy and stable in just about every situation and on every type of terrain. Quickly, here are a few other notable features of the Himaway Cruiser. It has a front headlight for nighttime riding, and while I will always suggest adding a handlebar mounted light plus helmet light if you're going to be commuting or riding regularly at night, the included light would be enough to get you home in a pinch. The rear brake light activates when braking and also acts as a rear visibility light when the front headlight is turned on. The rear rack holds a reasonable amount of weight and is perfect for mounting a basket or saddlebags to for transporting a load of groceries or something similar. The wood accent is also a nice touch. Overall, this is a really solid bike that really is a jack of all trades. This is a great choice for someone looking for a do-it-all recreational bike or for someone needing a reliable daily commuter. It has the performance and quality that you'd want out of a bike this price. You can check it out at the link below and be sure to check out my other review videos if you are considering a new e-bike or other PEV. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.